Hi everyone, Kansi here from Atop Serenity Hill. Today I want to share my favorite way to get started on an art journal page. Uh, it's the way I find inspiration, it's where I can get ideas from, and it is the use of prompts. So I have two different prompt decks here that, um, that I have available. This prompt deck is part of a free class I have called Three Simple Ways to Start a Daily-ish Creative Practice. You can find the link below um, or right here. There's a little video about it. And it is a, a simple prompt deck to just get me inspired. The other one is this prompt deck. It has about, this has 12 prompts. This one has a little over 70, I believe it is. I can never remember. And they are all different types of colors, um, techniques, supplies that I pull from. And that prompt deck is in my Etsy shop and you can find the link below. So I use prompts because a blank mind is a blank mind, a blank page is a blank page. Why fight it? Uh, there's a lot of other ways that you can find inspiration, but sometimes if you just pull a prompt, it gets you going. So I'm going to pull a couple prompts and then I'm going to pull together the supplies that I think go with that prompt and see where we can go with an art journal page and kind of talk you through how my brain works and how my process works. And I hope it gives you some inspiration to work through your art journal. How to start a page, where to find inspiration is one of the biggest comments um, and questions I get um, along with time. <laughs> I never have time. How do you find the time? How do I make time? And time I will dive into with a different uh, video. But this one is more about the inspiration, how to get started, and finding your ideas. Okay, so let's grab, let's grab some prompts. I wanted to do it live. Well, you know, live and recorded, but not pre-done. So I've got drip paint on a page. Glue bits of collage. I don't want to grab too many, but I'll just grab what I have in my hand. This says accent, so to add an accent of something, and then watercolor. So, you know what, I might add one more, a third, just because visually I like even things. I like things in threes are uneven, I should say, so we have five. So we've got tape, accent, watercolor, glue bits of collage, and drip paint on a page. So the way I would think this through is I've got tape, okay? So tape can be masking tape, it could be blue tape, it could be washi tape, it could be painter's tape. Um, what do you do with tape? Can it, it glues things down? It can be used with washi tape. You can use it as the actual supply, like it's decorative. Um, people like to do magazine transfers with packing tape. Um, so could you use that? So just using the word tape, like where could you go with it? What, what kind of supplies? What do you do with it? What does it mean? What does it look like? Okay, watercolor can be very self-explanatory. You can just grab, you know, your watercolors. Um, but do you have watercolor pencils? Do you have water-soluble crayons? Um, do you have watercolor that's that's in a solid tube? Do you have liquid watercolor? Um, can you combine it with one of the others that you have? Can you use watercolor as an accent around something? Okay. So accent to me would be like it's probably out of all of these is the hardest because I want to accent something, make it stand out. Um, so I wouldn't necessarily be able to use this as a starting point. That's why I grab more than just one. Uh, but tape I could start with, watercolor I can start with. Glue bits of collage, that is absolutely a starting point. Just grab your box of bits. I have... I have this, I call it my box of bits, and it's not a very large box, you know, you can see my hand about the size of my hand, um, not very tall, maybe about four inches, and it is like tons and tons of itty bitty pieces. So if I just start, just start dipping in and gluing down to the page, I'm gluing bits of collage. That's how I get started. What I glue down 
And the color scheme that comes up from that can then start to inform what my next decision is or what my next inspiration is. But you have to start somewhere. If you were starting with watercolor, can you just lay paint down? So you have to start somewhere, okay? Dripping paint on a page can tie into the watercolor. Do I want to use watercolor to drip? Do I want to use sprays that maybe are clogged and then I can just, you know, pull out the little sticky thing in the in the spray? I know you're like, what sticky thing? But, you know, and just dip it on there. Do I want to splatter it? You know, whatever, however I want to drip. Do I want to drip some alcohol inks? Whatever you have, just start. That's basically what it comes down to is that you can't make any decisions until you start. Um, so let me gather up some supplies based on this and let's see where we can go from here. All right, so I gathered up some things. So for tape, what um, I went through, like I, I, uh, besides the little box of bits I showed you, I also have a drawer of just bigger items. Um, I do, don't keep a, a ton of paper or collage material around, lots of bits, one drawer. Keep it simple. Uh, I don't like to be overwhelmed. So I had made my own washi tape. This is, I have a video similar to this. Um, I'll link it here and always below. Uh, on how to make washi tape using um, masking tape, okay? This is not the video that I made this specifically, but you get the idea with the video. So this is what I'm gonna use as my inspiration as tape. As I'm going through my drawer of things, this is what popped into my head, it's the first thing. I don't try to question what my first instinct is. Um, I just trust that no matter what I make, I'm gonna enjoy it, have fun, play, experiment, Go down the curiosity rabbit hole. What it turns out to be, it turns out to be. Okay, so that is also very important. That if you go into the page with an expectation of it has to be beautiful, it has to be perfect, it must look like someone else's, you will never learn to find those bits of curiosity and fun and experimentation and the oh, wonder where that's going. You know that is part of art journaling. Art journaling should be about just fun and play and curiosity. I'll say those words a million times. If you get too serious with it, then, and, and you're too worried about the way it's gonna look, then you're gonna lose the spontaneity and the joy, the joy, the joy and the delight. All right, so got my tape. Watercolor, I have my watercolor palette handy and close by. Dripping paint on the page, um, I'm pretty much think I'm going to just stay with watercolor. Um, I'm enjoying this new palette, so I think it's here. Why make it more difficult? And if as I'm going, something says, ooh, you know what would be fun? Go with that. All right, so that's what I've got for these. I've got my tape. Um, then I had glue bits of collage, so I just grabbed a bunch of itty bitty pieces out of my box. Again, just grabbed a few so that I'm working with what I have here and I'm not overwhelming myself. That's also something really key to getting started and working is to keep things simple. Work with a few supplies, don't work with a ton. If you run up against the fact that, you know, the color you're looking for, oh my God, I'm loving all this green that I'm putting down, I need some more green, then that's a reason to go looking for it. But don't get caught in the, I need to know all the stuff I need right away. Just grab a few things, put them handy, and go with that. All right, so I have my collage. And then I thought about the word accent. So accent can be the, the focal point of something. So I, as I was going through my drawer of, you know, paper stuff, a few things popped out. One, um, I have the saying, everything is always working out for me. So an accent to a page for me can be a quote. Um, I tend to, a lot of my art journal pages, as I go through them, end up with a quote. Okay, so I'm um, working through them. Of course, this is, I've got this and this is a terrible example of quotes. But, you know, there's always, there's a lot of times there's words on my art journal pages. And of course, this is the one time there's not. But a lot of times there's words. I'll get to the end of an art journal page and I'll wanna add something that I've been working through, something that popped in my head. Um, it just feels blank without words for me. That's a personal style that I have discovered that I really enjoy adding 
some kind of sentiment to the page. Okay, so this popped up. Uh, this mask that I've been using for jelly printing uh, ended up outside of my mask stuff and in my box of bits to use. So this could be an accent piece where as I work through it, this becomes the focal point at the end. I loved this unicorn. And again, I wasn't questioning what I was picking up. I was just picking up whatever looked interesting at that point. Whether I use it or not is irrelevant. Um, and then for some reason, these clippers, these gardening clippers seemed interesting. And then I found this envelope, which one has all these butterflies and a fairy. And then there's a gorgeous fairy on the back. It's an envelope. So I also have the ability, which I must remember so I don't cut through it, that, you know, I, I can use both, both sections because it is an envelope. So it's not two-sided. All right. So that would be stuff that I put aside as an accent piece. And I can see what shows up as I'm working. Right now, I don't even have a color scheme um, that I'm working with. So I'm gonna start by gluing some collage bits down, and then I'm gonna work through the prompts and see what comes up, okay? So I'm gonna put in fast forward, put some music on. Um, if something comes up that you're, that that seems relevant that I wanna talk to you about, about, I will jump in. If not, I will see you at the end and we'll discuss.
So this is what I ended up with, and I'm going to talk through a little bit of my thought process. Um, I did not have to add the tape, but I really, when I looked at the tape, I love these feathers. Uh, I'll pull it up a little bit. I love the feathers that had stamped on it, and I also loved this little bit of leaves, little bit of leaf, leaves. <laughs> this doesn't quite sound proper, but that gave it some interest because everything else was very abstract. Um, there was just not, you know, a, 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 a cohesive, or not, it is cohesive. It wasn't a defined, I think is where I'm looking for, element that gave it some interest for me. Okay, so that's why I loved it. Um, my color scheme came from the fact that the first piece of collage material I chose was this. Okay, and then my next decision was the black and white. From there, everything kind of just melded. I had this, I had a little piece of it here, I had another little piece. I love this black and white, but I didn't have black and white, so I found something similar that had the black and the hot pink that came, that, that married into this, okay? Then I looked at the idea of what did I love next. I loved the, the circles that were showing up on this piece of collage, so I carried them over to the rest of it. Um, one of my favorite techniques is taking what I call bleeding collage, um, taking the color that's in a piece of collage and bleeding it out onto the page. That way it doesn't sit on this hard line. Uh, it feels like it's literally bleeding out into the page. So I did a lot of that. I carried, you know, the mark that was on this collage over here so that as a design element, it makes my eyes travel over from one page to the other. And then the last, so I, I did tape. I ended up adding my tape. I used watercolor. I dripped the paint. That's when you saw me splatter the black watercolor paint everywhere. So that was my dripping. I started with the glue bits of collage to get me started. And then the final was accent. And this was the one that I had some pieces to add on top. And then when I was finished, without the words, I was like, I need white. For my eyes, I needed white. And so you can accent something with a color. And so instead of adding like the fairies or, you know, the garden instrument, I accented the black with white dots. And then my final accent was the words, adding these words at the end. I wouldn't have added them if they didn't feel as if... Um, they, they they did like if I put them down and they didn't work and they just kind of felt plopped there I would not have used them but they felt right as I worked off the page as a visual design element okay so I hope this gives you a, something to to start with uh, a way to think about just beginning how do I begin you begin by putting some kind of art supply on your surface after that what did you like about it? Could you add more? What did you not like about it? What could you cover? And be curious. Be curious and playful and just let it see what unfolds. All right? If you have more questions about what I did or um, any comments, I'd love if you made them, you know, just put the comments below. I do read everything and respond to everything. Um, if you have not subscribed, please do. I would really enjoy if you were a part of my community here on YouTube. And I will see you in another video. Thanks, everyone.